Hi, this is Patrick Ness. I'm talking about the rest of us just live here, and I'm doing it on the Mountains of Instead blog, which is a cool blog, and I'm doing this for Sia, or Sia. She didn't tell me how to pronounce it, but I'm going to go with Sia. And I'm supposed to answer these questions as if uh, I haven't been asked them, you know, where you put the question in the answer, but, but these are really good questions, and I think you should hear them. So I'm going to read her questions, and then I'm going to answer it. So here we go. Question number one. As with all your books, the rest of us just live here has a unique perspective on the world. How did you come up with the premise? Well. What it is, is there's two stories told in The Rest of Us Just Live Here, and in the chapter headings, there's the story of what you'd think a YA book typically is. You know, there's the indie kids with their indie kid names fighting an evil, a supernatural evil, and falling in love and falling out of love and eventually saving the world. But that's only in the chapter headings, because the rest of the book, the important bit of the book, is about all of those kids who don't get to be the chosen one. Uh, that's far more of us and there are chosen ones. And so I wanted to tell the story of Mikey and his friends, Hannah and Jared and his sister Mel, and in all the extraordinary things that you get up to in your own life. And that's not a, I don't mean that in a simplistic you know, way. I mean it in to tell somebody you love, that you love them without knowing if they love you back. That is just as brave as saving the whole world. So I wanted to tell those stories, and I wanted to tie them together, and I wanted them to intersect and bounce off each other, and uh, yeah, it's fun. It's a fun book. I hope it's fun. Question number two. The indie kid story as seen at the start of each chapter is both hilarious and lovingly tongue-in-cheek. You clearly have a fondness for the chosen one genre, but of all the shows and stories out there to riff on the idea, which is your favorite and why? And that, and that I think, I love that question because I think that's exactly it. This is done out of real love, real love and affection for for YA. You know, YA is so great, so has become so great, so vast and so welcoming and so full of everything you'd want it to be full of. So yeah, this is um, riffing on a lot of books. I mean, not, not one in particular, because I wasn't, I really wasn't trying to poke at anyone. I just wanted to take some of the familiar things like, like their names, you know, like um, no book is ever about sort of Joe, you know, <laughs> they're always about someone called Katniss, who's great there, or Bella, or, um, uh, Hazel and Augustus, you know, and these are all fine characters, but they all have slightly weird names. And so there was that, and there was there was the idea of um, there's a lot of Buffy in it actually, a lot of Buffy, and Buffy is one of the greatest TV shows of all time. So a lot of I'd have to say Buffy if I had to pick one, and you should all watch Buffy because Buffy's brilliant. Uh, third question: Mikey's battle with OCD is so vividly written that it is at times quite stressful to read and extremely heart wrenching. What kind of research did you do into a condition that many people are aware of, but which relatively few understand in extremists? Um, well, uh, I didn't have to do much research because I had a lot of the stuff that Mikey has in the book when I was a teenager. I worked at a steak restaurant like Mikey does. I washed my hands far too many times, made them bleed. Um, but I think, so I took my experience, so I knew my experience, but what to me was more important was the feelings inside it. The action is important, and getting the action accurate is correct, is, is, is uh, exactly what you need, but getting the feelings behind it true is, uh, is to me, was more important. There's a scene in the book where he tells someone that even among his closest friends, that he always feels like the least wanted or the least needed, he's the one they could do without. So that, to me, is the book, that feeling. Um, and finding out that that feeling may not be true. That's the cool thing. That's what I want to write about. Here we go. Question number four. While the many Chosen One stories often speak to the teenage and not-so-teenage feeling of being different, the rest of us just live here plays with the equally common feeling of feeling ordinary in an extraordinary world and does so extremely well. Thank you very much. What would you like readers to take away from the book? Um, I'm laughing because uh, I'm laughing because actually everyone has asked me that question. Everyone has asked me that question. And I... I I'm so not the guy to ask. I mean, I think, I don't want to tell anybody what to take away from a book. I mean, that's how it's personal, it's private. I mean, I, I know what I care about in the book. And I, you know, I've said that I feel really tender about the book. I think there's tenderness in the book between the friends and between Mike and his sister. And that to me is important, but you can take away what you want. I mean, nobody can tell you what you, how you respond to a book. However you respond is the right way. However you respond is the right way. And so take away what you, what you, what you like, um, truly. I'm curious to hear what it is, but I'm not going to tell you what. Uh, next question. The book focuses 
largely on the relationship between siblings, something I've not come across as a focus in YA fiction before. What made you want to write about this bond specifically? Mikey is very close to his sister Mel and his younger sister Meredith. And they've been through a lot together and their parents aren't so great, so they've naturally bonded. And just for me, it felt like something we didn't see very often. And I, something I think that feels truer than the endless sibling rivalry we get all the time, where you know, brother and sister are fighting but come together in kind of a sappy, sentimental, you know, oh, I love you, sis, at the end. I mean, what about the ones who always support one another? Because they exist. When I, you know, I get along with my sister, I've always gotten along with my sister. She's five years older, so we weren't competing for anything, but I don't know, we always got along. We had fun, we laughed. And I thought, I'd like to see that. You know, I'd like to see that, a book for all the brothers and sisters who actually quite like one another, because that happens. So that's what it's about. I'm really glad you noticed. I like that. Uh, the book is extremely funny, not least in the naming of the indie kids. How on earth did you come up with their monikers? I, that was so much fun. That was so much fun. Because um, the lead indie kid is called Satchel. It's a girl called Satchel. And she's helped by Finn, although half of the indie kids are called Finn, so they've had to number the Finns. So she's helped by Finn number two. And there are people like Kerouac and Dylan and Wisconsin and Aquamarine. And uh, it was just, it just made me laugh. It just, uh, it was a private joke to me. And if you laughed, I'm, I'm delighted that you laughed. Uh, so yeah, good question. Um, to hark back to your earlier work, A Monster Calls is being released as a movie next year with a phenomenal cast. Have you seen any footage yet? Yes, I have, I have. And oh my God, it's amazing. I'm so lucky, I'm so lucky. I, uh, stuff I could never come up with. It doesn't come out until October next year, but it's got Liam Neeson and Sigourney Weaver and Felicity Jones and a great young actor called Lewis McDougall as Connor. And uh, wow, it's amazing. Um, yeah, I can't give anything away, but it is absolutely amazing. So I can't wait until you see it. Um, and finally, 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 what's next? Uh, I'm not telling, because I never do. Because a book needs privacy to grow and to be its own thing before I set it out into the world. So, but I'm working. I'm working. I promise. I'm working. I'm working. Get off my back, see ya. Honestly. Honestly, what, what more do you want from me? Uh, yeah, so that's it. That's um, questions uh, answered for see ya at Mountains of Instead, uh, which is an awesome title, by the way. I love Mountains of Instead. I think that is such a, I love that. I love that. So, um, thank you very much. Um, yeah, read the book. Let me know what you think. Cheers. Bye bye.